evening to you and uh, welcome to Majesty Christian Television Network. My name is Apostle Larry. It's a joy, a great joy to be with you tonight and uh, to share the word of the living God. I trust that your week has been very fine and that you have experienced the, the kindness of God in, in a manifold ways. And uh, so I'm coming your way tonight to add to the blessings you have already received. And I know that your blessings will multiply and overflow. Do you know that the Word of God is a powerful seed? A powerful seed which has great, and which, which actually has multiple fruit. It bears multiple fruit and multiple, you're going to get multiple harvest. So, so I want you to be open to what we're going to share tonight and, uh, and see what God does with it. Hallelujah. However, as beautiful and as fruitful as God's Word can be, we do have an enemy, a, a, a contradictor, somebody who sometimes tries to pollute or to destroy the good which God intends for us. You might say, why is he saying this? Can, can, the, can evil destroy what is good? Yes. The Bible tells us in the book of Genesis that God made the, the earth and the heavens and, and then he made the beautiful garden of Eden. And then he created man and put the man in. And the Bible says that God gave them instructions. And later on, the Bible says that a serpent came and deceived them. And they sinned against God and they were cast out. You see, so that the beauty which God had prepared at the time got destroyed. So what am I saying? In this life, we have to contend with evil sometimes. You know, the best is what God wishes for us. And God, the best is what God actually plans for us. But every now and then, we see evil popping up. I want us to pray before we go forward, shall we? Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for this blessed opportunity you have given to us. We pray that your word shall come forth with clarity and that you provide insight, understanding, and revelation, a life-transforming uh, 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 blessing upon this word that whoever watches and listens, O oh Lord, will never be the same again. I want to thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I will be continuing what I began to share on the topic of prayer, knowing the will of God. But tonight, let me just uh, share with you something totally different. I want to uh, speak of what I'm calling destroying satanic wits. Destroying satanic wits. And I'm going to read from the Gospel of St. Matthew tonight, tonight. Matthew chapter 13 is where I'm taking my scripture reading from. Now, Matthew 13 from the verse 24, the Bible says, Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. So we always have good plans, good ideas you know, for our lives. The field is like our lives, okay? But while everyone was sleeping, this enemy, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. Now, it looks like we have enemies, sometimes we don't even know who our enemies are. But there are people who would, who would do everything to destroy the good that we are trying to do. Are you hearing me? Now, this is something that we have to be alert about. Look at the story that is unfolding now. You see that uh, in America, in, in, the, in Boston, Massachusetts, the state of Massachusetts, where two young people, you know, caused a disruption. They disrupted that uh, marathon event over there, you know, by, by setting a bomb to, to blow and to blast, you know, and to kill, I, I think it was three people, and injured hundreds of people. You know, you never know where the enemy is hidden, and that is a challenge we all have to deal with and contend with. You see, but there are times when God will reveal to us the enemy. He will show us so that we are careful. But what we have to realize is that the enemy of our souls, the things which seek to destroy the good in our lives the things we, we seek we seek to hinder us from enjoying the blessings of god are always hidden they're always disguised they're always all you know kind of covered up they're camouflaged and that is where the challenge is you see but if we walk in the spirit the bible says as is as in the spirit as 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 if we walk in the light as he is in the light we will be able to, to escape, and we will be able to spot the works of darkness. Amen. So, this is very, very important. So, the Bible says that an enemy came and sowed, 
sowed wheat among the wheat and went away. You see, they always do hidden things and they run away. And then the Bible says that, verse 26, When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, the wheat also appeared. So at the time when the good things we have done, we have, we have set in motion, begin to materialize, begin to become visible. You know, you've worked so hard, you know, for a good life, for your family, for your children. And then you have called, you've done your best to culture them and to teach them what they ought to know. And then before you realize, you see a strange attitude, a strange habit in the life of your son or your daughter. And you begin to wonder, where did this come from? How did she learn about dating men secretly and on Facebook and on Twitter and all, all the social media we have today? How come she's having secret phone calls and doing SMSs and, and chatting? And, and, and as soon as uh, somebody comes on the scene, then he, he covers up or he closes, shuts down everything. You can see the secretiveness popping up in the life of your children. And you wonder, where did they get it from? The enemy has a way of sowing bad seed among the good seed. That means bringing corruption, sowing corruption where we have cultivated good all the while. And this is what this scripture, uh, uh, this parable of Jesus is trying to portray. Now let's go a bit further. Verse 27, the owners came to him, the owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Because nobody really would do, want to do evil or to do harm to himself. It turns out that whenever a good man begins to reap evil, then it means that the evil one has sown bad seed in the work of the good man. Hallelujah. It means that a wicked person who nobody suspected or even believed who, who could have done it has gone secretly and behind the scenes to sow evil. And this is what we all are, uh, let me say, I wouldn't say we all, I mean, this is what good people, like you and I, are having to deal with every time and every day of our lives. Because they're of evil people, because of enemies, because of, 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 of people who, who are doomed for destruction, because they have sold their souls unto the devil. They are out to cause harm and to bring destruction. Hallelujah. But, thanks be to God, in spite of it all, in spite of their wicked plans, there is a way of escape. That the good you have done, which has become tainted, and has become destroyed, has become corrupted, has become entangled in a web of evil, I thank God that there is deliverance. There is deliverance. I was speaking with the man of God this afternoon. He was sharing his heart and how, how he has grown tired of laboring in this country because of all the failures and the setbacks he's had. He set his heart out. He opened his heart to people, other pastors and other ministers. When they come to church, he does his best, he and his wife, to support them and to bless them, to open their doors to him. By the end of the day, they only reap evil. Some of them only use for prophecies and what have you, yes. and to and to and to and to and to yes. influence people and to sometimes they speak things which never come to pass. Yes. And so all these things have happened, like and he has suffered. He has suffered so much, you know, uh, you know, in that part of town where he is, and, and he's wondering what to do next. He has really he just cannot understand. But all he has known, all he knows is that he has done nothing but good, and he has worked hard, preached the gospel, he has supported other ministers with his money, with his time, but when he looks at the harvest, he looks at the fruit of what he has today, it doesn't compare with how much he has invested. Perhaps you can relate to this because you, have, you may say, I have tried to live my life very good, I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been going to church, I've been serving God the best way I know how, but look, I cannot count i cannot really look back and say this is the fruit of all my toil and my labor you know but let me tell you as 
bad as it seems let's follow what happens here with this parable and then you will be able to see what jesus says will happen to all the good you have done which has become entangled which has become caught up in evil a web of evil all right okay so he said um so when the, the so the servants were saying uh, but didn't you sow good seed he said yes i did then they asked him so where did the weeds come from? Where did the bad things you are going through, you are experiencing, where did they come from? The weeds represent bad, bad things. Then verse 20, he said, an enemy did this, he replied. An enemy, see an enemy. Anytime you see evil things happening to you, in your life, in your family, in your household, in your business, which you didn't plan, then you must know that an enemy has done it. An enemy did this, the good man said. So the servants asked him, do you want us to go now and pull them up? He said, no, 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 don't. Because while you are trying to, while you are pulling the wheat, you may also root up the wheat with them. Let, bro, let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned and then gather the wheat and bring them to my barn this scripture blows my mind because it gives us um let's say a solution it gives us um a way to deal with sometimes evil and bad things which happen and affect our lives and affect the work we do if you're a good man a good woman and then you find out that every good you intended or you have actually done yes. has only brought out evil. I want you to know that you are not responsible. An enemy has done it. Hallelujah. An enemy has sowed evil seed among the good you have done. And so now you have to live with a situation whereby your good plans and your all the preaching and you have done all the investment in people you have done all the money you have invested in your business all the the upbringing you've given to your children the love and the training all has been corrupted by or has been affected by some strange character some some disappointments some failures and all these things that you begin to experience and you begin to ask yourself where did this come from if you uh, in that situation, I want you to know, Jesus is saying that there will be a day when by the good you have expected to reap will be separated from the evil, which is choking them right now. Whenever I read the scripture or I minister on this scripture, I feel encouraged because I know I have labored. My wife and I, we have labored so very hard. Labor so very hard. Much of the things we have done today, if you look, you cannot see them. Yes. But I know that the record is with God. And I know that according to the scripture, every good seed we have sown and the harvest thereof will be gathered and we shall see it. So this good man who Jesus is talking about, you know, he looked at the thing. I'm sure he must have been heartbroken. Just like you'll be heartbroken when you see that every Hard work you've done, it's like it's going down. It's like it's failing. It's like it's not where it's supposed to be. You will be heartbroken, just like this man. But, you know, he had wisdom. And that's the wisdom I needed to have. He said to his servants, don't go and try to solve the problem now by trying to separate the bad from the good. Because now they are mixed up. The good and the bad are mixed up. Amen? When you have done good and people are instead speaking evil about you, they are giving a false testimony about you. It's like your good has not been overshadowed by the bad. People don't see anything good about you no more. They forgot everything. They only see the bad things. You have to be patient. You have to wait. You have to, you have to hold yourself because if you don't take it, you might want to react in a very wrong way because that is not what you expected to receive. Or to see in your life but hold on because the time is coming when the good will be separated from the evil hallelujah i want you to be encouraged by this i'm going to continue this message by god's grace later on i'm going to try to finish it up
And we're going to pray also to deal with this, what this satanic weeds, as I call them. Satanic weeds is what I call the sins. Yes. Satanic weeds are those things which creep up when you least expect. And they try to destroy the good that you have done. Satanic weeds are the people who creep among your children and begin to corrupt them and to try to lead them astray. Satanic weeds are the people who try to go behind you and try to sniff our people from your church. Some people, even from the, in this city, they even send other scouts to go and look for girls in my ministry to marry them and to take them away. Yes. Some of them did things like that. You know, you don't believe where some of these things can come from. But all you know is that an enemy has done this. I want you to know that you will recover. You will recover. You will recover. You will recover. You will recover in Jesus' name. Good will never be lost. Good seed will never be lost. You will get back the fruit of your labor in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Father, I want to thank you tonight. Let the few words I have spoken bring encouragement to somebody to give them hope that any good they have done will never be lost. It surely will be guided again. I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. Let what I've spoken encourage you. I'll be back next Sunday, same time, 7 o'clock, by God's grace. And keep praying and keep believing God. It will be well. Love you and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.